1250 KTRS. I'm just tired of non-support, and I don't really want to support. You know, if he calls now and wants to, this happens all the time. That was Donald Trump from uh, Bill O'Reilly last night. Our next guest, you see him on uh, Sundays with George Stephanopoulos. And if they were let him speak, you would hear more of his brilliance Sunday morning. We let him speak here. Matthew Dowd, thanks for checking in on the Big 550 KTRS. It's so great to always be with y'all. All right, good. Uh, is Donald Trump now switched to a scorched earth policy and doesn't care about bringing the House and the Senate down with him? Well, if we believe his own words and his campaign's operative words, that seems to be the case. You know, as I have said in years past, when you have a kitchen sink strategy, which means you throw everything at somebody else, including the kitchen sink, mostly what happens is you damage your own house. And he's in the process of damaging the Republican Party. Uh, he's doing the you know, interesting thing that Donald Trump is doing something that Democrats could never do, which is seriously damage the Republican Party and make Hillary Clinton more popular. Which is why you have to ask the question why they are following him over a cliff. Well, I, I, that's a very good question. I mean, I think they're in a uh, the Republican candidates, the office holders are in a very conflicted, complicated place. They know that if Donald Trump gets beat badly at the top of the ticket, it endangers their many of their elections. But they also know if they side too closely with them, there's a number of voters that don't like that and don't want Donald Trump. So I think they ought to just fundamentally give up on their election calculation and decide in principle, do they or do they not think Donald Trump should be president of the United States? If they don't think he should president the United States, then they should tell voters that. Uh, last night on O'Reilly, O'Reilly asked him about his problem with women, and Donald Trump said he doesn't think he has a problem with women. Is is he just is he incapable of understanding the facts? And because it seems like him and his supporters don't want to live in the reality. Well, I, I don't, you know, obviously I don't know what's in Donald Trump's head or what, what actually he knows or doesn't know. It would be hard for me to believe that any sane person wouldn't, couldn't look at any single poll and look at the fact that women overwhelmingly right now are voting for Hillary Clinton, especially women that voted for Mitt Romney. Are, many of them are voting for Hillary Clinton in this, not because they like Hillary Clinton, but because they don't want Donald Trump. I am not convinced that there's anybody in his campaign that is willing to sit down and tell Donald Trump the truth. And every campaign and every organization, as you all know, you need people that are willing to tell you the truth no matter if you want to hear it or not. And I don't know if there's people like that in his organization. Let's let's talk Paul Ryan for a second. I was talking to a couple of operatives yesterday, and they said that the House isn't in jeopardy, but Paul Ryan's hold on the Republican base is. If he loses a couple of more moderates, a couple of more sort of independent-minded Republicans, he loses to the Freedom Caucus, and that's what he's trying to stop for, from happening. Well, I, interestingly, I think we're going to have, on November 9th, though we think everything up, up until now has been unprecedented, we may be in an unprecedented situation on November 9th, which is, Hillary Clinton is likely to win, and a majority of the country will have voted against her, and she's likely to win, so they're going to be unhappy. And then you're going to have a House Republican caucus that if they survive and still hold power, and there's a chance that Democrats could win. I mean, I would pay attention to the number seven, which is, is when you get above 7% Democratic advantage on the generic congressional ballot, then it's going to be more problematic for the Republicans to keep. But even if they keep, Paul Ryan is in a very precarious situation of retaining the speakership in the aftermath, and then the Senate may switch. So we're going to be in a situation after Election Day where it's going to be very tough for any part of this to govern. Uh, let's talk on Missouri here for a second, because it, the Senate might come down to Roy Blunt's seat here in the Senate. Missouri is going to be a safe t uh, Donald Trump um, uh, state, but they're still saying that that Roy Blunt, Republican, is in trouble. How do they how do they make sense out of most people voting for Donald Trump yet not voting for Roy Blunt? Well, I think part of the thing is is that Donald Trump is not going to get fifty percent of the vote in Missouri because of the third party candidates and other folks, and so Donald Trump may win Missouri. Though I can get I can guarantee this, I was looking at numbers in the last forty eight hours. Missouri is going to be closer than people think. Um, because of what's happened over the last week and a half. But Donald Trump, let's assume he wins, he probably wins the state with 46 or 47 percent of the vote, which means a candidate who, who's out there popular like a Democrat could end up winning the state because it's a choice between 1D and 1R in the Senate race. 
could end up winning the state and the Republican candidate for the Senate get most of Donald Trump's voters. That's the situation you're in in Missouri. Matt Dowd, is Donald Trump making plans for Trump TV, and that's his strategy now from here to the end of the election? Well, I think he still wants to win, though I think, if you, as I said, if you look at any point of the data, it's, it's very difficult. Absent some unknown event happening, Hillary is likely to be president of the United States when this is all said and done. I don't know. I don't think he's going away because even if he loses, he probably gets 50 million votes. So there's still a, a coalition of voters out there that still support him. I think he's going to – he's seriously damaged his own brand. Um, I don't think they understand the full effect of what's happened over the last few weeks on not only the presidential race but his brand in the financial world and in the business world. So they're going to have to figure that out. It is a possibility he could have a television network in the aftermath of this because of, of the loyal supporters. But his brand is damaged. Matt Dowd, we let you speak here, unlike George Stephanopoulos, who steps on your toes all day long. <laughs> Thanks for checking Thank in, you. Matt. All Always right. appreciate it. You Thanks. got it. Matt Dowd, best in the business, right there. Good, uh, good way to break it all down. 7.42 here, Big 550.